Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today I'll be reviewing and working with the Shadow Rock LP CPU cooler, courtesy of Be Quiet. This is a low profile CPU cooler designed to support CPUs with a TDP up to 130 watts, while only measuring up to be about 75 millimeters tall. I'll be covering the specs, the build quality, and the performance on my Ryzen 3600 test system. Before I get into the review, if you're interested in PC component reviews like this one, gaming PC builds, or home lab server content, get subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon below this video to get future video notifications. I'll be linking out to the Shadow Rock LP cooler in the description below, so definitely check that out. Be Quiet rates the CPU cooler as being able to cool a CPU that has a TDP of up to 130 watts. The heatsink includes mounting support for Intel legacy systems as far back as socket 775. The cooler also supports socket 2011 with the Square LIM and of course the newer LGA 1200 socket. As for AMD, the cooler will work with all recent and some of the even ancient platforms. The mounting method uses the clip system, so support is extended from the AM2 socket all the way up to the AM4 socket for the current Ryzen 3000 processors. The heatsink is also compatible with the FM1 and FM2 sockets. The heatsink has four 6mm pipes that run through the base plate. The Shadow Rock LP has a C-shaped profile allowing it to fit into many smaller cases. There's a main fin stack on the top of the heatsink with a smaller fin stack underneath, providing a little bit of extra surface area to remove more heat from two of the four heat pipes. Be Quiet also includes one Wings 2 fan with this cooler. The maximum speed for this fan is rated at 1500 RPM. According to Be Quiet, at full speed, it will push about 51 CFM at an air pressure of 1.25 millimeters to H2O. The fan also contributes 25 millimeters to the total height of the cooler, making the cooler just 50 millimeters tall without the fan. It is a PWM fan that has a lifespan rating of about 80,000 hours. Fully assembled, the cooler will weigh in at about 395 grams. Moving on to the build quality, the Shadow Rock LP was an overall solidly well-built cooler. The compact design lends itself to being a little bit stronger. The last fin at the end of the heat pipes is a little extra thick, and this helps make sure that when you're handling it, you don't accidentally bend or malform that last fin. I've definitely made this mistake before and bent the last fin on other heat sinks, so it's nice to see that they did this on the Shadow Rock. There's not a lot to this mounting kit, in fact, it uses the stock AMD retention clips to clamp onto. During testing, I mounted and dismounted the cooler several times to test that the clips and the clamp system were providing good pressure between the heatsink and the CPU. Each time, I found that they held their shape well, they provided good mounting pressure, and the temperatures were relatively consistent. There's no good way for me to test long-term durability since I would need to have this fan for several years, but I can say that the Silent Wings 2 fans that I currently have in my personal rig have been going very strong for a while now. Next, we're gonna take a look at the benchmark results. For the benchmark runs, I ran the Shadow Rock on my 3600 test bench system. All of the CPU settings are set to default to see how far the CPU can boost the clock speeds with this cooler installed. I have the cooler facing the rear of the motherboard since I'm using a taller pair of G-Skill Trident Z memory dims. In the 3 d Mark Time Spy testing, the cooler kept the CPU at an average temp of about 65 degrees across all six cores. The peak temperatures were in the 69 Celsius to 72 degrees Celsius range. The CPU was able to boost to 3.9 GHz on all cores during testing. During the ADA64 CPU stress test, the processor saw an average temperature of 72C with peaks into the 73 and 74C range. The CPU was able to boost up to 3.93 GHz on average. Moving on to my custom handbrake testing, 
I took my 2600X build video and converted from X264 to H265 while using the Handbrake high quality preset. The CPU heated up to about 75C max during testing, but averaged about 70 to 72C, allowing the cores to boost up to 3.94 GHz. Next up is ASUS RealBench, which is a popular stress testing tool. The average core temps during the 20 minute runs were 69C across all cores, with highs into the 74 to 76 range. The 3600 boosted to 3.95 GHz on average. Lastly, we have the Prime95 tool. This is more of a simulation in how to melt computer parts than it really is a useful tool at this point in time. During testing, the peak temperature was 85 degrees with an average temperature of about 80 degrees. The CPU was however only able to boost to 3.7 GHz on average during this test. This isn't really unexpected since Prime95 is a really power intensive program that increases heat and voltage usage so much so that the clocks typically do drop. Overall, the Shadow Rock LP performed extremely well for such a short and relatively compact cooler. It is important to note that my tests this time were run on a test bench, not inside of a case. I suspect that in a smaller sized HTPC case, you will see temperatures about 5-10% to higher depending on your total airflow and the cable management. The Shadow Rock LP comes in right around $45 on Amazon at the time of making this video. This is quite a good value in terms of low profile CPU coolers. As I mentioned before, the AMD mounting system does use the factory retention arms with screw in clips, so definitely don't get rid of those. This is definitely a more compact mounting method than Noctua's SecuFirm 2 method for example. The Shadow Rock is a well-designed and well-priced cooler that I would definitely recommend for anyone doing a small form factor build that can fit a 75mm CPU cooler. Depending on the case, this might also be a good match for somewhat larger ATX cases. I'll be linking out to the cooler and the build parts in the description below, as well as the manufacturing specifications, so definitely check the description out. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments section if you think this cooler would go well with one of your builds. I create gaming PC and home lab tech videos every week, so if this kind of stuff interests you, get subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon below this video for video notifications. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff, or on the website, samstechstuff.com.